Today we're at least 100 kilometers from the nearest paved road and we haven't seen another vehicle in two hours. We've driven over eight logging bridges, taken six different spur roads, and hit a thousand potholes along the way. I think we may have actually located the middle of nowhere, and it just so happens to have a perfect trout stream running through it. We make a lot of effort to find places like we fish today because it's worth it. There's nobody here, mostly because nobody would go to the ridiculous lengths that we did to get here. And the fish behave a little differently too, quite frankly. They're, uh, for the most part, easier to fool. They, um, they don't have somebody throwing a fly at them every day of the season. I've been told that we're possibly, quite possibly, some of the first people that are going to be fishing this location in like the last two years because there's, uh, there was the flood last year that knocked out a bunch of bridges, so this place was inaccessible. Nice. Oh wow, what a cutty. Oh my goodness. It, it's a relief to know that there is still solitude around somewhere. And uh, I'm pretty comfortable with the whole isolation aspect of it too. I don't, I don't mind being um, by myself. I've always enjoyed fishing by myself. I think this, this kind of connects you with, with one part of fly fishing that is perhaps uh, diminishing or receding as time goes by. And uh, I, I feel relieved to know that it still exists. Standing up on this high bank looking through the grass. Yeah, it makes me nervous that <laughs> the fish are looking right at us. Yeah. But they, we can see them down there and they seem to be behaving more or less normally. And there are a number of large trout in this hole here, hey? Yeah, and they've, they're rising occasionally, but they, when we get a good look at them, we'll see them look towards the surface. Yeah. Even move up a little and then turn away like, gee, I wish there was something up there. Yeah. So maybe we can be of service. Yeah, I like that idea. There we go, there we go. All right, I'll try and keep them away from that log and that log. You, my friend, I noticed have a landing net. I do, yeah. I don't know if we're ready to use it yet, but we'll see if we can get down close enough. Wow, he's a beautiful cutthroat. I'm gonna get his head out and just get him right at you. Okay. You ready to go? Yeah. Down there. Nice, well done. Oh, look at him. Look at that. Look how fat he is. There he goes. There we go. Say you got it all, but you're bound to fall. Yeah, you're tired. I took a cast across the river and looked away to, to kind of give the guys a glance and next thing I know I hear this explosion and my line tightens up and this bully had taken my fly. My rod is bent over as all I had was my cutty rod which is a five weight. Fortunately we had enough pressure on there that uh, we got that fish in quite fast and uh, had a nice bully right at our hands. This fish came halfway out of the water to take the stream. It was a, that's probably the highlight of that pool for me. A business trip to the city last week reminded me of the opportunity and variety urban life affords. Within walking distance of my 20-story hotel, I found two waffle shops, three Starbucks, five sushi restaurants, and two major league sports stadiums. The only thing it didn't have is this, an unaltered stream flowing from glaciers high in the Rockies, unaffected by human hands, which for me is everything really. Just a 